right, here we go. What is the one thing you would attempt if you knew you could not fail? What's the one thing you'd do? Are you doing it? Or did you try something similar and it didn't work out? And you said, well, it's just not my, I guess it's just not God's will. I'm blaming it off on God. What is the one thing you'd attempt if you knew you couldn't fail? Now, these are important questions because without, without you really taking thought about these questions, then I, there's no need for me to share with you the keys to living amazing. What is the one thing you'd attempt if you knew you couldn't fail? I've even said many times, what would you do if education didn't matter, money didn't matter? What would you do? What would you attempt? What would you attempt if you knew it would succeed? What is the one thing? Now, this is really getting into the nitty-gritty now. What is the one thing? I didn't say ten because there shouldn't be more than a couple. Anyhow, what is the one thing that you need to eliminate from your life to rise to the top? You know, I was watching a video. It was about a minute and a half. And it, and it said what you should do. <laughs> <It's, laughs> I know this video I saw. <laughs> it was explaining what you should do if, you, if, you're, if you're falling from an airplane without a parachute. <laughs> well, yeah, that would help. And it explained that it's possible to fall, fall from 35,000 feet. Now, if you're falling from 35,000 feet, it said you're going to pass out because of lack of oxygen, but around 10,000 feet, you're going to wake back up. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it told, you, told me what I should do. I shouldn't fall into the water because it would kill you. <laughs> but it said you don't want to do one of these numbers. You want to do like this and, and aim to a soft spot like a grassy marshy spot. And if you land, you don't want to land on your head because it might kill you. <laughs> but you might want to land on your feet. And I'm thinking, I'd like to get back up in that plane. Now, I saw Bugs Bunny one time, and a plane was crashing because it ran out of fuel. And right before it hit the ground, Bugs jumped out. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm glad y'all are here tonight. You glad I'm back yet? Why was I sharing that with you? Anybody, do you have any idea? But you may not remember my seven points tonight, but you'll go tell people about that story tomorrow. You'll explain what they should do if, they, if they're falling out of an airplane without a parachute. When it, what is the one thing you'd attempt if you know you couldn't fail? What's the one thing you need to eliminate? It's not to parachute. What's the one thing you need to eliminate from your life to rise to the top? The reason I was telling that story is because a hot air balloon has sandbags on it and it has a, a stake in the ground and a rope to the stake we were driving out of a neighborhood in west little rock several years ago and they were actually airing up a hot air balloon in the driveway of one of the houses we're like that is so awesome you know some people have a tesla they got a hot air balloon <laughs> and you know if you want to go up you have to drop off a sandbag if you want to rise higher, you got to get rid of some of those weights. Sounds familiar? Sound like a scripture? Seeing that we're surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, speaking of the heavenly balcony in heaven, let us do what? Throw off every weight. And the sin that does so easily beset us. If we want to rise, is there something? Is there just something? It doesn't even have to be sin. Just something that's holding you back. What is it you need to throw off so you can rise higher? And also on a hot air balloon, you know, they got that, that flame, and you can turn it up, and you'll go up, or you can turn it down, and eventually you'll float down. So let's just decide tonight to rise to something amazing. So are you ready for amazing? Who's ready for an amazing message? You mean it hadn't already been one? Okay, well, we've got to start somewhere. Just a simple example. If you're not going somewhere yet, keep going. You'll get there eventually, right? Actually, on the ship, they had a big logo and a big design of the ship, and it actually showed red dots. 
That's where I was. That wasn't where I wanted to be. I wanted to be over here. You ever been out to Magic Springs? It'll say you are here. You want to go to the log ride? You'll have to figure out how to get there. So let's see how we can become amazing. Maybe we need to throw something off. Maybe we need to do something different. Maybe we need to try something we never tried. So if you're ready for amazing, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 says this, The Lord replied, look around to the nations, look and be amazed. For I'm doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it. Have you ever been in a service and somebody else was preaching and you said, I don't know if I believe that or not. I didn't say I was preaching. Somebody else preaching. You said, That's a far out story. Are you amazed? See, it, when I got out of jail, November 14th, 1972, didn't know what to do or where to go, what next step to take. I've told the story of where I finally trying to get to a friend's parents' house in Worms, Germany, how the Lord led me. Here I am, a little infant Christian, miraculously released from jail. And the Lord leads me by His Spirit to a small community about nearly an hour from where I was actually living. Didn't know where I was going, just knew the family I was trying to find. And the Lord led me to that house in the cold, in the snow. First miracle, free, and all charges dropped. Two, God leading me to another community, to another city, to a specific house of a family from Little Rock. And here I am, days old in the Lord, and my life's already amazing. I tell that story in detail, and I'm amazed. I was thinking about it yesterday, thinking... That is weird. That is crazy. How the Lord led me. But now look, all these years later, is he still leading you? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Let me ask you this question. If everyone in America served God like you, would we experience revival in the land? Or would we have what we got? I want you to think about your other favorite preacher. Think about your favorite preacher. Think about the persons that maybe you admire, you like to listen to. Someone that you've seen an accomplishment. What if we were all like that person? with that same passion, that same drive, that same get up and go, that same refusal to quit. Well, maybe you are that person. Then what if we were all just like you in serving God, passionate about God? What if we were all as passionate about worship as our worship team? What if we were all as passionate about little children as Leah and as Lance and as those of you who serve in children's ministry? What if we were all as passionate about school and education as Tina and Bradley and Jennifer? What if we were all as passionate about Jesus as the most awesome Jesus freak that you know? So let me ask you a really important question. Does the devil know your name? When the devil hands out assignments, do his imps rejoice? When they get assigned to come to your house because they know they can whoop the daylights out of you? Or they go, oh no, don't send me down there. He knows how to use the name of Jesus. Does he know your name? Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Second Chance Youth Ranch TV on Victory Television Network. And I'd like to invite you personally to join us every Thursday night at 11 p.m. as we look at the need for fostering, adoption, and mentoring. What a great opportunity you have to join us every Thursday night at 11 p.m. right here on Victory Television Network, and I look forward to seeing you. All right, Life Keys. You ready for Life Keys? Raise your hand if you're ready for Life Keys. Inspiration, encouragement, inspiration, and some great information. Raise your hand and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, you have been saved. I want you to notice every point I have has an S in it. 
Starts with an S. The key word is starts with an S. Here we go. You are saved for a purpose. And that purpose is not to sit and listen and listen and listen. It's not to marry for the rest of your life, sitting at the feet of Jesus. At some point with Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus attitude, you get up and serve with Mary's heart like Martha served with an attitude. Come on, I'm going to put that in a note. You've been saved from sin. Now listen to me, young people. Raise your hand if you're young people. You have been saved from sin not to continue living in it. You've been saved from it. Now, here we go. I'm, I'm praying about how to get this across. This may not be a good example, so I apologize in advance. But in foster care, we deal with children all the time. And in this ministry, in my ministry, I've dealt with a lot of young people who were born to alcoholics or drug addicts. My daddy was alcoholic. It affected every child in the family. And so many times, drug addicts have a baby who is addicted. But if your mom or dad were not drug addicts, your mom and dad was a king and a queen of a nation. Would your beginnings be different? Drug addict baby or a baby whose parents are a king and queen? If you are born naturally, you have a sin nature. And because you have a sin nature, you know what you do? You sin. Jesus came to give us a new nature. Through his exceeding great and precious promises, we become partakers of the divine nature. Old things have passed away. Behold, everything is brand new, including you. Now, the reason I make that point, because everybody gets trapped in this, this poor old me, I'm just a sinner, saved by grace stuff. I was a sinner. I do still sin, therefore I repent. But I am a born-again child of God. I was born a child of Paul Black, an alcoholic. As a result, me and my siblings participated in an ungodly behavior, even though mom took us to the church. But then I got born again. And now I have a heavenly father. My father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I'm a child of God. I'm not a child of Adam anymore. I'm a child of the last Adam, not the second. He was second, but he's the last. His name's Jesus. I was born of the flesh, but I got born again. You are saved for a purpose. You've got to grab a hold of that. And you've got to quit saying out of your mouth, I'm just a sinner. I'm just human. Because you're not just a sinner and you're not just human. You have been partakers of God's divine nature. All right, if it's going to take that long for you to clap, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> All right, so here, here it is right here. You ready? I have Jesus. Say this with me. I have Jesus in my heart. Are you born again? You got Jesus in your heart? Every kid knows that. I got Jesus in my heart. Say, I have Jesus in my heart. I have the mind of Christ. And my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh, you didn't say Holy Ghost. You said Holy Ghost. Say, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on, now you're getting it. Say, I, therefore, by the grace of God, I, even I, am amazing. You are amazing. You get to go to heaven, the devil's going to hell. Woohoo! That's amazing, man. Come on, I've been digging and scraping and plowing here. I'm ready to plant some seed now. Say, I am amazing. I'm a child of God. I may sin, but I'm not a child of the devil. I don't have a sin nature. I have a new nature recreated in Christ Jesus. My body is sanctified by the Holy Ghost. My body, my spirit, my mind is being transformed because I'm washed in the blood. Oh, I'm amazing. Come on, young people. Are you amazing? You young people amazing? They didn't sound amazing. 
They look at me like, I'm amazing. <laughs> Listen to this. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moons and stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. That word angels is Elohim, which is the plural form of God. A little lower than the angels? He created us in his image. A little lower than him. Do you not know, Corinthians, Paul wrote this in the Holy Ghost. Do you not know you will judge angels? Come on, I'm not done. Look it up on your own. Do your own Bible study. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him. Who? Man. With glory and honor. You made him to have dominion. Say, oh, that's amazing. Oh, you didn't say that. Say, that's amazing. Dominion over the works of your hands that you have put all things under his feet. Whose feet? We used to sing a song. Hey, Mr. Devil, got a message for you. It's written on the bottom of my shoe. When I married Danny Halbrook many years ago over at St. Teresa's Catholic Church, all kinds of funny things happened. And when he knelt at the altar, he had on the soles of his feet, help me. <laughs> that was pretty funny, too. I got a message for the devil. It's written on the blood of Jesus on the soles of my feet. He has given us the authority of God over his creation into our hands to take dominion. And he's putting all things under our feet. Oh, 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 that's amazing. That hurts so good. I made some notes here. You can find these at Family Church Bryant on our free app at the App Store. You can watch it, listen to it, and make a Bible study out of it, share it with all your friends. You know what they'll say? Wow, that's amazing. That's what they'll say. To experience amazing, we must be intentional about what we want to become. I want to be like Jesus, rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I'm going to give him more of me. Jesus, take it all. Jesus, don't just take the wheel. Take all the load. Take it all, Jesus. Thank you for your encouragement. Work that song in there. We must be intentional about who we want to become and what we're dedicated. Everybody say dedicated. To accomplish. Say, what's it matter? What's it matter if you accomplish it all, but you don't become like him? Over and over every day, I see another, another one. Bite the dust. Over and over, it's heartbreaking to see those who are visible, those who seem to be outwardly successful, that are accomplishing and writing and speaking. But they're not becoming like Jesus. And because of that, they crash and burn. You got to be intentional. You got to live your life on purpose. You are saved for a purpose. Now listen to me. Maybe there's somebody watching, somebody that's here. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, it don't matter what else I tell you. Because it's exhausting to endeavor to live without faith in God. All right, so you're saved for a purpose. And this is important. You've got to say no. I used to do just say no seminars. And people keep asking me to come and speak, and I kept saying yes. <laughs> and I finally got to the point, because I didn't ever want to turn down an invitation to be able to help somebody in some way. And I finally just had to say, I'm teaching people how to say no, and I can't. If you don't know how to say no to some things, sometimes you'll miss the right things. you got to say no to naysayers. We love Janet's dad. He is a master degree social worker, LCSW, I think, for the Veterans Administration. He had worked and owned his own grocery store, and I was in the grocery business, and Anytime I had a great idea in the shower, Wayne, 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 where's Wayne? He said, why do you always talk about being in the shower? Because God talks to me in the shower. If you quit singing long enough, he'll talk to you too. And what he told me in the shower? Quit singing. 
That's what people say at church. <laughs> you got an attitude. And I knew this because he was ultra conservative. That if I shared any ideas, any dreams, any visions of passion of my, of my thoughts and desires, if he couldn't talk me out of it, I knew I could do it. Had a pastor for a season in Southwest Little Rock, Brother Hudson, and Tommy Lewis, who's with the Gideons here in Saline County. Uh, Tommy said, you know what? Brother Hudson will try to talk you out of the ministry because he believes he can talk you out of it. You're not called to it. you got to be able to say no to the naysayers. There's a lot of people who will do everything they can to talk you out of the dreams of your life because they see the flaws and the humanity and maybe they see your inability or your lack of quali- squiggly fingers. I hate that. Qualifications. <laughs> Listen to this. To him that believes all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Aren't those great verses? But here's a good one. Jesus said those. Paul said this one. I, everybody say I, can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Starts with I, ends with me, Christ in the middle. Christ ain't in the middle, you're going to be in the middle of a mess. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You've got to believe you can. You don't have to take a poll. You don't have to have a census of other naysayers, other negative people, others who are toxic, others who have tried and failed, others who aren't willing to pay the price to tell you why you shouldn't even try. Say no to the naysayers. Guard your heart. Careful who you surround yourself with. They say, whoever they are, they're the experts. They say, if you want to know what you're like and what your future's like, see your five closest friends. They say that one out of every three people have mental problems. If your two friends are normal, you are the problem. (laughs) Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I don't just see your attitude. I see your multiple personalities. I love this statement. I shared this on social media because I saw it, and I'm a, I'm a social media thief. I don't even give you credit. I just take your stuff and redo it. If your friends aren't my friends, I'm going to share with my friends what you're sharing with your friends, and if it's good, we all enjoy it. God's calling on your life's not a conference call. How many of you, how many of you, young people, y'all don't even know what we're talking about? Y'all, do y'all even know what a phone looked like before they had those things that you walk around with? You remember when you could have a cord 30 foot long in the kitchen? You'd take it off the phone, you'd walk all the way to the living room. Well, even before that, this is really wacky, Bill. A party line. I'd run across the highway in Jonesboro to the Coleman's house. They called me Horsefly. I don't know why, I'm a very calm person. They said, What you need, Horsefly? I said, I need to borrow a cup of sugar. They said, You don't borrow sugar. You don't. No, you borrow the cup, we'll give you the sugar. I'd run over there and I'd say, can I borrow the phone? They said, no, but you can use it. I'd pick the phone up and somebody would be talking on it. I said, Miss Coleman, somebody's on the phone. She'd say, hold on, honey. Uh, can, can we just have a minute here? If y'all could finish up, i got a young boy here needs to use the phone. That was a party line. Y'all remember party lines? Now party line's called TikTok. <laughs> that was for the young people's. Snapchat. (laughs) Say this with me. I have Jesus in my heart. I have the mind of Christ. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost because I am amazing. You say, I wish you'd quit saying that. You don't, you're not, you don't feel comfortable saying you're amazing, do you? I can't say that. I won't be humble. 
I'm going to be humble. I want to think about this. How amazing are you? Can you name more than one person that died for you? You're amazing. That's what he thinks about you. He thinks you're valuable enough to die. He loves you enough that he died to make it possible for him to send the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, to come and live continually with you. Because he wants to spend all his time with you. Everybody say, with you. He wants to spend all his time with you. He loves you. You know why? Because you're amazing. How do I know you're amazing? Because he's made you amazing. He washed you in the blood. He purified you. He set you apart for his use. Because he believes you're so amazing, he wants to spend all of his time with you, not just for the rest of your life, but for the rest of eternity. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Say, that's amazing. (laughs) If you're going to quit anything, this is a Dave Ramsey, and I'm just going to be honest, I was Dave Ramsey before he was. I taught him getting out of the money trap before he printed his first book. He just kept printing them. He knows how to distribute them. Here's what he said. If you're going to quit anything, quit making excuses. Oh. Slap them upside the head. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, slap them upside the head. That's Bible. Jesus says somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn the other. I'm trying to do biblical teaching in here tonight. Look at the person beside you and say, this man is amazing. Young people, wake them up. <laughs> All right. Well, that was number three. What was number three? You got to say no to the naysayers. Oh, oh, number three is awesome. Learn to see opportunities, not just the obstacles. Opportunities. Somebody says no. What's that stand for? Next opportunity. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. When you see a wall, Turn it into a hurdle. Don't let it stop you. I've even said this. It's not biblical, but I've said this. I'll run through a troop. I'll run through the daggum wall. People that are amazing see obstacles as an opportunity to learn something. An opportunity to do something that maybe they've never done or maybe something that no one's ever done. 